bulging. It was bank holiday morning. The small railway engines were working hard. Their station was crowded. But no sooner had one train started than another was filled, waiting to go. Duck, Oliver, Donald and Douglas were busy too. But they had not brought everybody. The, car, the yard was full of parked cars and coaches. Duck was waiting for his next turn. Alice and Mirabel complained of the heat, so he backed them into the goods shed while he basked outside in the sun. Near him stood a huge red bus. He'd never seen it before. The bus watched the passengers happily milling round the small railway. Stupid nonsense, he grumbled. Wouldn't have brought him if I'd known. I'd have had a breakdown or something. I'm glad you didn't, smiled Duck. You'd have spoiled their fun. Look how they're enjoying themselves. Pa, snorted the bus. Enjoyment's all you engines live for. Taking the petrol from the tanks of us workers. Come the revolution, he went on fiercely. Railways will be ripped up. Cars and coaches will trample their remains. Free the roads, he growled. Free the roads from railway tyranny. At the passing station, Duck told Oliver about the bus. I call him Bulgy, he chuckled. He's painted bright red and shouts down with railway. But next time they met, Oliver didn't laugh. Bulgy's friend has come. He's red and rude too. He's taking Bulgy's passengers home so as to leave him free to steal ours. But he can't object to Duck. Ours want to go to the big station. Bulgy bets he can get there before us. Rubbish. It's much further by road. Oliver looked anxious. Yes, but Bulgy says he knows a shortcut. That evening, Donald, Oliver and Duck were preparing for the homeward rush. Duck's train was to be first out, but he had few passengers. He soon found out why. Look, shrilled Oliver, look at Bulgy, the mean scarlet deceiver. Bulgy had turned to leave. They could now see his other side. It had on it railway bus. Stop, yelled Starp and Engines. But too late. Yah, boo, snubs, jeered Bulgy. He roared away. The unsuspecting passengers waved happen. Come on, Buff Duck. He, Alice and Mirabel, trundled unhappily away. Alice and Mirabel chattered crossly. The nasty old thief, he's stolen our people. The nasty old thief, he's stolen our people. Duck wondered how to pay Bulgy out. Then far ahead, a man clambered up the embankment, waving a red scarf. Danger, he shouted. The line here crosses a narrow road. Duck came as close as he could. So this was Bulgy's shortcut. He chuckled. Bulgy was wedged under the bridge. Drivers of cars trapped in front and behind were telling him what they thought. Angry passengers cornering the conductor demanded their money back. From time to time, loosened bricks fell on Bulgy, making him yelp. Bulgy's passengers swarmed round Duck. He tricked us, they complained. He said he was a railway bus, but wouldn't accept our return tickets. He wanted us to think railways are no good. Please help us. Duck's crew examined the bridge. It's risky, they said, but we must help the passengers. Passengers are urgent, agreed Duck. Besides, he chuckled, it'll pay Bulgy out. They laughed and told the passengers to wait on the other side of the bridge. Stop, wailed Bulgy. It might fall on me. That, said Duck severely, would serve you right for telling whoppers. Bulgy howled as he felt the bridge quiver, but it didn't collapse. Duck made good time to the big station, and all passengers caught their trains. The fat controller arranged a shuttle service on the branch. 
Passengers changed trains at Bulgy's Bridge. Bulgy had to stay till it was mended, but he never learnt sense. He told whoppers till no one could believe his destination boards, and no passengers would travel in him. He has a hen house now, in a field beside the railway. If he still tells whoppers, they can do no harm. The hens never listen to them anyway. <laughs>